This is Bert with InformalGadget.com and today I will be giving you six simple steps to make your Macintosh computer run faster and smoother just like the day you bought it. We will also be encrypting your hard drive to make it more secure and we will be using Time Machine to back up all your important information. Okay, step number one would be to go find yourself an external hard drive if you don't already have one. If you're shopping for an external hard drive, I would highly recommend getting FireWire 800 or using Thunderbolt. Um, Thunderbolt would be the best option, but they are a little bit expensive if you could find an external hard drive with Thunderbolt on it. Most Macs already have the, the port for the FireWire 800. If you have USB, it's good enough. Uh, it's not as fast as FireWire 800, but it'll do the job. I'll provide some links down below so you could find your external hard drive if you're shopping for one. Step number two, you're going to have to delete everything on your computer that you do not use. First thing you need to do is download App Zapper. I have the link down below. Once you download it, open it up, and it will give you a list of all the applications you have on your computer. You need to go through all the applications and find out which ones you use and what applications you don't use. Once you find an application you don't want, you click on it, it'll give you a list of everything that it's going to delete. You hit zap and it deletes everything that has to do with that application. It is a very good application. I highly recommend it. I use it myself. After you're done using App Zapper, you're going to go into your iTunes, delete all the music, videos, TV shows, whatever that's on your iTunes that you're not using, podcasts, delete it all. If you're not using it, if you don't care about it, it shouldn't be on your computer. It's just taking up space. Also go into Aperture, iPhoto, GarageBand, and do the same thing. Delete everything. Step three is moving your iTunes library and your Aperture library to your external hard drive. If you have a FireWire external hard drive, or a Thunderbolt exter external hard drive, I highly recommend you doing this. To do this, you need to go into your hard drive and find your iTunes library. It's usually inside of your music folder. Once you locate your iTunes library, open up your external hard drive and just drag and drop it to wherever you want it inside your external hard drive. Once it all loads and you're sure that all your iTunes information is on there, Go to your iTunes icon and hold down the option key on your keyboard. Once you have it held down, left click iTunes icon and you will see uh, choose library. Click on choose library and locate your new iTunes library on your external hard drive. Once you do that, it should open up iTunes on your external hard drive. Once you're sure that your external hard drive is reading fine with iTunes, go ahead and go back to your original iTunes folder and delete your original iTunes library by just dragging it and sending it to the trash. Now you're also going to want to move Aperture if you use that. The way you do that is open up Aperture, right click on your projects, and click on Relocate Masters for Library. When you click that, you'll see this little window pop up and just point it to where you want to locate all your masters. So just go into your external hard drive and put it in your pictures or make an Aperture folder and put it in there. Once you have it to where you want to send your master pictures, hit relocate masters and it will send all your masters to that one specific area on your external hard drive. Once you do that, go here to aperture, go to preferences and it says under general tab library location, change it to the same place as where you sent your masters. Select and you should be okay with that. Once you're sure Aperture is working correctly, you can go into your 
hard drive and locate the original uh, aperture library and send it to the trash can. Once uh, everything's working properly for iTunes and Aperture on your external hard drive, you could go ahead and just right click the trash and empty it. Step 4 is an optional step if you want to delete all your unused languages that you don't use you can delete them. It's just extra space taking up for something that you're not going to ever use. So on the link provided below you'll see monolingual. Download it from the wet from the link and once it's downloaded double click it to open it. You'll see all the languages that it will delete. Obviously you would want to keep English if that's your primary language and delete all the ones you will not ever use. Once you see you're okay with all the ones you want to delete, just hit remove. It'll take about 15-20 minutes to delete everything from every program and uh, you should have more memory from that. Step number five is to use disk utility to clean up your hard drive. So after you've deleted everything from your hard drive that you do not wish to have on there anymore, you're going to use disk utility to repair all the permissions on the hard drive. So the way we do that is go up here to the right hand side and click on the search spotlight section and you're going to type disk space utility. Should be the first program that pops up. Click on that. And we're going to find the hard drive we want to work with, which is the internal hard drive of the Macintosh computer. When we click on that, we're going to go to the first tab here, which is First Aid. Then we're going to go down to Repair Disk Permissions. We're going to click on that, and it should take anywhere from 10 minutes to 30, 40 minutes, depending on how much work Disk Utility needs to do on your internal hard drive. It is recommended you do this about once a month. Just let it do its thing. Right now, saying two minutes because I've done this already. But let it do what it needs to do. Don't browse the internet or use any other programs until this is fully done. In step six, we will be using File Vault to encrypt our hard drives to make it more secure. And we will also be using Time Machine to back up all our important information on our external hard drive. So to turn on File Vault, we need to go up here to the left hand side and click on the Apple symbol, then go down to System Preferences. Once we're in System Preferences, we go up here to Security and Privacy. When we're in Security and Privacy, we're going to click on the second tab that says File Vault. Under File Vault, it says File Vault secures the data on your disk by encrypting its contents. It automatically encrypts and decrypts your files while you're using them. And then on the bottom it says to click to file vault is turned on for your disk Macintosh HD. Yours will say that it's turned off, so turn it on. When you click on that, it'll tell you to restart your computer. And when you come back here to security and privacy, it's going to have a loading bar on the bottom. Uh, mine took about five hours to do, so I recommend you doing this while you're at school or at work or asleep. So once you encrypt your hard drive, Go back to System Preferences and click on Time Machine. In Time Machine, we will be able to turn on Time Machine by clicking here. We will also be able to select where we want to, to back up our Time Machine. So on our external hard drives, or in my case, I'm going to be backing, up, backing it up in a time capsule. So you just click on that, choose your external hard drive, and you click Use, use as Backup. Then down here in the options, we could also choose to back up other external hard drives. So in my case, I have an external 2 terabyte hard drive that I want to back up in my time capsule machine. So I'm going to click on the G drive here. Once you do that, you hit save, and it will back up automatically. You don't even have to use it, think about it. It just does everything on its own. Thank you for viewing my how-to video. If this helped you out, go ahead and give me a thumbs up down below. I would very much appreciate it. And don't forget to visit informalgadget.com. Thank you very much.